the moment it was getting more dark and dark, I saw this little light coming on. Huh? You see that yellow light? Oh, two of them. Shit. This is a lot of water. We are two crazies from South Africa, that's Frick and Pietro. We decided to chuck it all and we are now living and safe full time on our new home city. Inside there. So it's somewhere inside there or inside the fourth peak. Oh, not going to do anything now on that. Shit. That is a lot of water. And they don't see the fresh water pump coming out. Yep, tastes like salt. Oh man. Shit, it's a lot of water. Okay, I checked both bulges and both of them is leaking. The starboard side is not leaking as much, but the port side is definitely leaking. And this is only the first night. What else? <laughs> oh. And it is super, super hot. Very, very, very hot. I'm drenched in sweat, completely. Oh. oh, I think I'm going to just monitor the situation. I've got the high water alarm as well, so if the high water alarm comes up, then I know the bulge pumps cannot keep up anymore. So I can see that the green light is coming on every time when the bow is going forward or when we no take a nose dive. So I will monitor that. If that one keeps on coming on like permanently, then I know the leak is is getting worse. And I I try to figure think where on that side. There is a forward looking sonar and a side scanner, the 3D, what I call it RVX, right marine sonar. Both of them is not working. Um, but I, uh, maybe I should just need a little bit of a tweak, maybe tighten the bolts or something. Um, the through holes, maybe inspect them and grease them, that's one thing. And on the starboard side, I've got the, the temperature, the water temperature and the depth sounder. Um, that is flash with the, with the port, with the hull. So I don't think they can be a problem, but okay, that's, that's one hole. <laughs> And then the other hole that is common between the two is the pop stays. And we, I've just asked just cut them around to, to strengthen them. So maybe there is a problem. Um, I was from the start not happy with the guy that was doing it. And yeah, let me see if I, and I can do nothing on the scene, it's going to be up, up to nine days 
Uh, okay. It is what it is. You just need to manage this. This is my third day. Yesterday I did not take any videos. Maybe I did, I cannot remember. But uh, that first night was here in this passage on this on this channel. Um, between Haiti and Bahamas. Oh man, it was it was a nightmare. The wind was shifting the whole time. It was just a nightmare and I couldn't sleep the night and lots of things happened and Ugh. anyway this is my third day and I just want to show you guys basically where I live <laughs> and it's just everything here behind me so if I own watch I always then you saw me take some videos and it is enclosed and then this is all enclosed 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 and if I sleep, I sleep here, or I sleep there, depending on on which side of the this side or this side <laughs> I want to sleep. And I use a 15 minute timer to wake me up. So basically just 15 minutes of sleep. Um, the timer is set for, for 20, but you now you take a couple of minutes to settle in and a couple of minutes to yeah, fell as fall asleep, and it is difficult. Sometimes you don't know. You set a timer, you didn't set a timer, so you wake up halfway, not even halfway, maybe yeah, say so halfway through the sleep, you wake up. Wow, is a timer set? And you check, and the timer is set. It's like, Shh. or you will just 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 fall away, and then you can feel the boat start eating again, and you know we are not on the right heading because if, if you can you can guide the boat to not be going into the waves all the time because if it goes into the waves it just like stops and stops so then you just need to adjust five degrees this way or five degrees that way like now and that's it's very comfy comfy and right it can be for everyone for the boat and um, so like last night was good and a problem in nights at night is that you cannot see where the waves is running from you just know you get whacked from the front but you don't know if you go left or if you go right or starboard port whether it's going to be better or worse so you do that and then it just so it takes time to get the right nice comfortable track and then you try again to sleep and maybe you thought it was the right track, you just fell asleep, the wind shifts again or you go into another zone where the other ricochet waves is hitting you and start over again. Last night was I think more successful sleeps than non-successful sleeps when I got woken up by the boat or by worry that I didn't set the timer Oh, just nightmares. <laughs> it's like, uh, this is uh, it's my first solo, and it just happened to be the thorny path. Maybe, and then hurricane, or you don't get it to a hurricane status, but tropical storm Brett was here a few days. Actually, the same day I left, it went through. So, all the aftermaths of the waves of that Brett left. He still was also in the channel. So I think that was maybe a mistake. The wind showed perfectly. No, no uncomfortable wind speeds or things like that. But it was horrendous. The moment you get into this channel, it was it was tough. Okay, so let me go upstairs again. See what's going on there. I think 
it's almost I talked as much as I would have slept. <laughs> so let me go and see what's happening up there. So if I wake up, what I basically do is just around, go around, uh, around the boat inside to see that all the drawers is still locked and the doors is what it's supposed to do because the first night some drawers fell out or came out so, and it well one broke so it's not good so i do that and then i come here and i i did my little scan see if there's any any boats that i can see because the lights i can see and the ias i can see and then I'm also checking on the radar because maybe there's something that, like for instance, I cannot see the boat there, but I can see here on the radar is one. So what I do then is I just go, you know, and I say acquire target, and then it will acquire the target, and I will be able to see which direction that boat is going or what the intentions is, I still cannot see it. And I see there's another one. Sometimes it's also oh, reflections of the shrouds or something like that. But let us see, maybe, maybe it is too moving up. You see that one is now acquired. In the beginning, it is, it's whacked because you don't know which way it's going and which way it's not going. That one, I think we can cancel. That one is now hooked on to me. Come on. So that one is passing us about eight miles away. <coughs> so in the beginning, the radar needs to first settle. So you need to wait a little bit to see what is the real direction, what's the real speed and so on. So it seems like that one might cross, cross out, also going to the same destination so that's what I do I come up here and make sure everything is is okay if there's a big ship or a boat that I can see then obviously you cannot go and sleep again because those guys they move quite fast especially the passenger liners they go they actually go quite fast and and or if like now I can see also here also here I can maybe, oh, and this is what happens. You see, this hobby horsing, I don't, I don't like it. It's not good for the boat. So at night you don't know what's happening. So I need to decide either go more this way or go that way. Because the moment we pick up speed, we just nose dive and then <laughs> it's not good. It's not big waves, it's small ones. Okay, so I can see that we on our limit. Uh, well, I like it to be between 40 and 43. Um, but I think this hobby horse, if we go that way, it will not work. Oh, you hear that? So I'm going to go five more that way. And then we, we will see if it's working out better. So at night you don't know which way to go. <laughs> Pick with your guys like this, then you can see. So many people say, why don't I have a jacket or anything on a harness? I do have the harness down there, but if I stay in this enclosure, I think I'm good. It must be really, I think the danger of me knocking something my head or breaking a leg or slipping somewhere on the boat is more than I will fall into the sea so um, and if you have any life jacket or any how do they call how do the guys call it here in this region PFD personal floating device <laughs> a life jacket and um, or a harness, I don't think that will help me. If I slip and hit my head against that winch, no harness, no clipping, nothing will work. <laughs> I will still be unconscious. Um, with a harness or life jacket on. And the other thing about the harness is, everyone says you have to be clipped in. And 
the jack stays while we now add this topic I saw many people they have they run their jack stays here right right next to it all the way to the front but it will be so easy to fall overboard with your lifeline on with your, your your clip in on so and then you will be dragged down there and that is the most drown drownings came from that um, even instruct instructors die because well with students the instructor will fall off and the students just cannot bring the guy up either it's too heavy or the water drag is too much or they are too slow to figure out to get the topping lift out they just cannot get him fast enough out and he will be drowned so if you do clip in make sure you cannot fall overboard my my jack stay is running here so if i need to go to the mast i clip in over there and then i can walk all the way there around the mast and then you can see there goes the line there goes the line all the way to the back so if i do fall off i will just fall off the roof but i will not fall off the boat even here so that even if i want to fall off my two meter will not let me hang in the water in a sense so i will be maybe hanging on the on a surfboard or something like that on the lifelines but not in the water so that is a thing to tell me just to clip in and but I see what people is doing is not always the right thing to do um, you have to make sure you cannot fall in the water and also <laughs> clipping in make, doesn't make you safe it just makes you that you don't fall overboard but in the boat you will still hurt yourself and, and you can you can almost I'm sure you can kill yourself by falling down the stairs or hitting your head against a thing and and I know people say oh since we have sharp edges and blah blah all of those things yes the chances of getting hurt much more is it's of if I hit the corner of a table chances of me cracking my skull will be higher than cracking a skull but I bet my dollar on if you fall on this thing or if you fall on this thing or even this corner here even though it's a rounded corner if you fall on there you will know it and you will crack your it as well depends on how far you fall and and people s get out of a bath and break their backs slip and break their back so it's oh well, it's each for the to the own i think and um, so i think do what makes sense and don't go outside unnecessarily don't take chances that's why you guys don't have a lot of footage outside <laughs> well let me give you footage outside yes some footage outside do you like it <laughs> and yeah so and the sugar scoops on a catamaran is is very stable it is actually uncanny how stable the back or the aft of, of a catamaran is but still don't take chances 